Hello, everybody, and welcome to The War Room. This one is for this weekend's heavyweight clash, Sergei Pavlovich taking on Curtis Blades. Now, this is a really interesting one for a few different reasons. I mean, Curtis Blades, of course, is the strongest wrestler in the division. You know, he's, he, his wrestling prowess and the power of the drive of his double leg is enough to put, well, pretty much any heavyweight on their back. The times he struggled, though, were against people that hold their ground very well and have got very good counter-punching, and that's that's ultimately what Pavlovich is going to be trying to do in this fight. If he pressures too hard, he's going to make that takedown easier. Um, it's, it's a really interesting one, though, this is, and this is kind of the fight I feel like if Pavlovich picks this win up, he's definitely, you know, in the title picture. Before we go any further, I've got to give a shout out to our sponsors for the show, our friends over at Point3 Gear. These are the new Full Reptile Point3 collab shorts that we've just made with them. They are incredible. Of course, the design, we are responsible for that. We know you like the sticker bomb design, so we've revamped it and we've brought it back and we've we've passed it over to Point3 who make these incredible shorts. They are a, a, a lightweight polyester fabric. They're, they're moisture wicking. They're very, very comfortable to wear when you're training. And the best thing about them are these built-in towel uh, sections at the top either side of the hip. So, I mean, I've been using these for deadlifting all week. Between reps, if my hands are starting to get get a, a, a bit sweaty and, and I'm losing my grip, put the bar down, wipe them on the towel on the shorts, and I'm straight back into my lift. They, they are, I mean, it's, it's just a great idea, great design. Very comfortable, very lightweight. You can wear these in whatever kind of training or exercise or hanging out or whatever you're doing. You won't regret buying a pair of these. Go to point3.com and check them out. You will you will love them, I'm sure. Okay, tale of the tape. <clears throat> so, Sergei Pavlovich coming in with a record of 17 wins and one defeat. That one loss was his, his UFC debut against Overeem. Uh, the only loss he's got on his record, it's the longest fight he's also had in the UFC, which is quite amazing considering it was, it was still a first round finish. Um, since then, he's been on a five-fight win streak. Uh, Marcelo Go, Maurice Green, Shamil Abdurahimov, Derek Lewis, and then, of course, tied to Ivasa in his last one. And his last two fights were under a minute long. I mean, you know, he is a first-round finisher. Um, but, but at the same time, he's not in, in, in a rush necessarily. And that's going to be important against Curtis Blades, who is a very strong wrestler. He doesn't particularly like to stand and trade with power punches, so we can kind of predict that at some point he's going to be level-changing. Um but but what we've seen in more recent fights is that he's starting to he's starting to bide his time a little bit on his takedowns. Like if we go back to the Derek Lewis fight, his last defeat, which was a, a second round knockout, or we go back to his loss um, in Beijing against Francis Ngannou, same kind of situation. He's he's trying to get a takedown, so desperately trying to get a takedown that he's he's running on to punches. Um, with Rosen strike, he was far more comfortable with striking. He was he was timing his takedowns. Um, in a far more, you know, a far more measured way. He didn't look nearly as as desperate to get the fight to the floor. Um, and I think with Rosenstrike, because he because he is a power puncher, but he doesn't move very quickly, it was a good opportunity for Curtis Blades to kind of test his jab, you know, stay mobile, use his footwork a bit and keep using that long reach that he's got, 80-inch reach. I mean, you know, he really should be using that jab more, more than, uh, than we've seen him in the past. Um, and then, you know, his next fight, of course, against Chris Daukas, he caught him with that lovely counter right hand as Daukas moved forward. And and I mean, you know, I think you remember I picked Daukas for that one. I've, I've always thought Chris Daukas was going to come into his into his uh, own as a heavyweight and he hasn't yet. But, um, you know, that was a really impressive performance from Curtis Blades, who was able to patiently pick him off. You know, of course, Chris Daukas has got a good ground game, so that was going to throw a, a question into whether whether uh, Curtis Blades was going to try and take the fight to the floor. He chose to strike and, and he looked good doing it. Um, now, of course, this is a different fight again. The, you know, Pavlovich is um, a, a physically powerful heavyweight. He stands quite low and quite he's, he's quite patient with his output. He's got a very, very good jab. So he measures the distance between him and his opponent very well as he edges his way into range. Now, when he does decide to go, he, he, he attacks very quickly, and that's why he's got so many first-round finishes. But there are certain things about his game that I think are going to be really useful against Curtis Blades. Now, the first thing that we see him do a lot is this... It's a very kind of Soviet Union style check hook that he uses. Kind of turns his knuckles down and hits here. The, the the fighter that you see doing this a lot in boxing is Dimitri Bivol. He'll bounce in with a jab. He goes in and then out with this kind of curving check hook. 
it works really well for him. And, and often it gets people to kind of drop their head a little bit. And what you'll notice about Pavlovich's finishing ability, when he's closed people down against the fence and he's starting to see them move from these straight punches, he starts coming up the center line. Like we saw it against Marcelo Gome, we saw it against um, uh, Taito Avassar in the finish, Abdurahimov, Lewis, same thing again. He gets them backed up against the fence, their posture breaks, and he comes up the center line. And, and you know, if you're fighting someone like Curtis Blades, who has a really, really good power double, you know they're going to level change pretty much straight in front of you. You know their head's going to drop into that pocket. You've just got to make sure you're timing those punches at the right time so you're not you're not punching too early and giving the takedown. You're not punching too late and the punch gets smothered. So <clears throat> what I expect from this fight ultimately is that Curtis Blades is going to, he's going to try and hold his ground best he can and give... Uh, Pavlovich the impression that he's going to stand and trade with him and then when Pavlovich starts to get a bit over enthusiastic he starts to move forward a bit more aggressively that's when I expect Curtis Blades to level change <clears throat> now a lot of the time and, and this this happens a lot more in the lighter division in the lower divisions as well there's a lot of takedowns against the fence. People like to, to work takedowns against the fence and control their opponent up against the fence. What you'll notice with Curtis Blades, because he's got such a good drive on his double leg, he actually likes to have quite a bit of space behind him. So it's not a bad thing for him to be backed up against the fence here. If Pavlovich is kind of commanding the space with his jab and his check hook and he keeps threatening that uppercut, if Curtis Blades, even on the back foot, can can sell the idea that he's going to throw punches and then level change with all of that space to drive into and he can turn that corner he might even be able to drive Pavlovich in almost like a 90 degree angle and drive him back into the fence to finish the takedown like that might not be a bad thing but what what he has to be very careful of is being predictable on his level change like this is always the situation when an opponent's backed up against the fence and the example I always use is BJ Penn against Sean Shirk and it's a, and it's an older fight some some of you might not have seen it's worth a watch <clears throat> the reason why I use it as an example is because Sean Shirk was an excellent wrestler 5 foot 6 very physically strong the muscle shark you know ground and pound was his game um BJ Penn, of course, is a fantastic grappler, but he was winning the striking exchange because, you know, according to Freddie Roach, BJ Penn's hands are some of the best he's ever seen in mixed martial arts. And I believe it. Like the way that BJ Penn kind of walks people down could be very, very similar to what Pavlovich does to, uh, to uh, Curtis Blades. The beautiful thing about this fight is as BJ Penn got uh, uh, Sean Shirk back to against the fence, he knew that there were three options, right? The, the first option is to move left. The second option is to move right. The other option is to level change. And if you've got someone that's a, that's a wrestler, same as Masvidal against Ben Askren, if you put them under pressure, they resort to their comfortable skill set, which is level change. Ha head down, hands out. Ben Askren ran onto a knee. So did uh, 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 so did Sean Shirk. And, and I'm not saying that, that Sergei's going to going to time his knee, but, but certainly the uppercut, which <laughs> a Sergei Pavlovich uppercut is probably very similar to a knee from from a a, 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 a BJ Penn or a Masvidal. Like, there's going to be a lot of power in that punch. He, he would It would require a lot less space and a lot less risk if he was uh, if, if he was jumping in with a flying knee. It, it would be potentially risky for a takedown. In fact, we saw that against Rosenstrike. Rosenstrike jumped in with a knee and we got um, Curtis Blade level changing straight away onto it. I, I just, I feel like Curtis Blades can absolutely get this fight to the floor. He has to set it up, though, because that, that uppercut is a serious problem for him. Pavlovich can absolutely catch Blades with the uppercut, but he has to time it right. If, if he's too aggressive, if he's trying to get him out of there in the first round, and, and this is the danger in being on such a win streak. I mean, you know, you look at the win streak that he's on. He's on, he's on a five-fight win streak. He's beaten some big names, the likes of Derek Lewis and Taito Avassar, and he's doing it all in the first round. If at any point, if at any point he hits Curtis Blades and feels like he's hurt him, or he feels like he's intimidating Curtis Blades, it's gonna it's gonna make him uh, more aggressive. It's gonna make him more excitable, and, and and that's really where we need to see him kind of take control of his emotions in this fight. You know, hold himself back a little bit and find his opportunities to land these strikes. Like this is a five round fight. He's done five rounds before, but it was back in what 2017 in St. Petersburg. Um, he was fighting for the FN, uh, FNG Heavyweight Championship. Like, 
he's not really a five round fighter, especially not at this level. I feel like if 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 this becomes a ten minute fight, it starts to lean towards Curtis Blades because most likely he's going to have established himself in the striking, so he's got confidence in that range, and that's going to allow him to start setting up his takedowns if he hasn't already. Um, something else that I thought was quite interesting as well because the the effort of takedowns from Curtis Blades has dropped off against recent opponents. Like, if you go go back and you look at his fight against... Where is it? You go back and look at his fight against... Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, Alexander Volkov is a good example. Mark Hunt. He got 10 takedowns against Mark Hunt in 15 minutes. Against Volkov, he got 14 takedowns in 25 minutes. That's a really, really high work rate. But then you look at his last couple of fights. That, I mean, there have been no takedowns against Daukas or, or Aspinall because they were so short. But the Rosenstrike fight, over 15 minutes, there were three takedowns out of six attempts. Now, that's a, that's a considerable drop in effort. But what we have to remember is that he was racking up somewhere between 90, 90 seconds and three minutes of control in each one of those rounds. So the point is, if he gets the takedown in, early in the fight, he's going he's gonna to be scoring control, he's going to be wearing Pavlovich out, but at the same time, Pavlovich is going to be able to scramble, he's going to be able to get back to his feet. He's got decent takedown defence, we've not seen him under a massive amount of takedown pressure, but I expect the earlier takedown attempts from Curtis Blaze to be far more difficult to get than the later ones. If the fight is allowed to breathe a little bit and Curtis Blaze gives the impression that he's going to start kickboxing, then his takedowns will come easier. And once they start to start to come easier, then he's got more energy to work on control. What he doesn't want to be doing is burning energy trying to get the fight to the floor. So when the fight is on the floor, he's, he's just holding and controlling. It, the referee might stand them up. Pavlovich is not going to have as much fear of being taken down. Like there are lots of different drawbacks to him exerting himself early. If I'm Blades, I'm I'm working into the 25 minutes for this one. I'm making this as long as I can to make Pavlovich as uncomfortable as possible. You know, you push him into the second round and straight away it's new territory for him in the UFC. And, and you know, he's an experienced fighter. He's got 18 fights on his record. He's he's beaten some some good fighters in his way into this main event here. But Going back to your stool at the end of the first round and sitting down and going, okay, right, I've got 20 minutes left. This guy is going to be wrestling. He's going to be pushing a pace on me. Like We don't know where his, where his mindset will be in that second round. It will be a shock to his system for, for his UFC career, that's for sure. And the other thing as well is, you know, Curtis Blades is not just stopped by anybody. Like He takes good shots, but the people that are knocking him out are the biggest punchers in the heavyweight division. So there might be a bit of a shock if Pavlovich cracks Curtis Blades and isn't able to put him away. Like, there's a lot of interesting questions coming out of this fight for me. I, I'm personally wondering whether Pavlovich has got the, the, the ingredients in his game to be able to be a heavyweight champion, especially now John Jones is back. But with Curtis Blades being such a strong wrestler, and wrestling being such a, a fundamental part of controlling an MMA fight, you've got to keep an eye on Curtis Blades. It's, it's kind of like the anomaly in this division. Um... What haven't I said? Let me have a quick look at the tail of the tape. Because, so like I said, Pavlovich's takedown defense isn't um, isn't too bad. I mean, it's at sixty six percent, but that's based on three takedown attempts. If I remember right, I did make a note of this. So, the, so uh, Overeem attempted two takedowns and scored one. Abdurahimov attempted one and failed. So he's sixty six percent takedown defense. He's based on stopping two of three takedown attempts, which is not a lot. And he's coming in against Curtis Blades, who's probably going to, you know, he's probably going to shoot three takedowns in the first round if he decides he wants this one on the floor. It's going to be a much higher work rate for Pavlovich um, if he is forced to wrestle. I would like to see where his gas tank is because, again, if he keeps progressing, if he fights, ends up fighting someone like a Mircic or a John Jones, wrestling is a big component that he's going to have to deal with. We know he's got power striking and we know he's very accurate with his striking. My question around Pavlovich, especially in a 25-minute fight, is where that drops off. At what point does he start to get too tired? Does he start to look a little defeated? You know, kind of like he did in you know in, in the in the final moments of the uh, the Overeem fight. It was, uh, yeah, it 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 seemed to me almost like a little bit of a, he looked a little bit overwhelmed in the moment. You know, UFC debut, taking on Alistair Overeem. Um, he was undefeated, of course. That 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 brings an additional pressure to it. I think he he felt like the pressure was on him because people were expecting a lot of him. And then he steps into his debut against Overeem. That was that was a big test for him. But now because he's proved himself in the UFC, there's a lot of 
uh, excitement around him again. People are excited to see him progress towards the heavyweight belt. But we don't know how he's going to deal with a big wrestler over 25 minutes. And if he's able to, and I would like to honestly see him deal with some wrestling adversity because it would give me confidence for him going into a fight against John Jones. Whether John Jones is going to wait around that long or not, that's a that's a whole other question. Um, what else haven't I said? So let me quick go through the tail of the tape because I don't think I did. Did I? Did I skip over the tail of the tape, Jamie? I kind of feel like I might have done a little bit. Okay, so we got seventeen and one for Pavlovich. Yes, I did because that's where I derailed myself. My thinking. Seventeen and one for Pavlovich. The one loss, of course, is to um, Overeem. Seventeen and three with one no contest for Curtis Blades. His losses are to Ngannou and um, uh, Derek Lewis. Now, considerable different average fight time, 2 minutes and 15 seconds for Pavlovich, which is ridiculous, compared to 9 minutes and 37 seconds. Again, the longer this fight goes, the more it starts to lean in Curtis Blades' direction. We know he's got the conditioning to push this fight, and, and I, I think he's going he's gonna to have to to get the victory here. Um, a 1-inch height advantage for Curtis Blades, a 4-inch reach advantage for Pavlovich. Again, he's got such a good jab, long jab, bivol hook, uppercut. I, I, I feel like they're going to be his main routes to victory. Get Curtis Blades reacting to that lead hand. It keeps him safe on the outside, so if Curtis Blades does start to level change, he's either got the time to defend it, to move, or to set him up for the uppercut. But that lead hand is going to be key, and he is very, very good with it. But then, you know, Curtis Blades' his jab's improving as well. So uh, it might not be the, the, the easiest of range to, to dominate in. But um, still, lead hand's going to be key. Of course, strikes landed per minute is considerably higher for Pavlovich, given the fact that his fights are so sure. 8.07 compared to 3.54 for Blades. Um, same striking accuracy, both 51%. Um, more strikes absorbed per minute by Pavlovich. And, and I think if he is taken down, that's that's going to change again because Blaze is just going to keep racking up strikes if it's on the floor. Control and strike, control and strike. Um, we, we could seriously see some stats changing on Pavlovich's record here, um, especially the takedown offense, which, as I said, is at 66% at the moment based on only three takedown attempts. Average takedowns per 15 minutes, none for Pavlovich, 6.05 for Curtis Blades. Um, an, an incredible output when it comes to when it comes to wrestling. And and of course, because it's such an expected part of his game, um, you've got to think it's going to be a distraction for Pavlovich all the way through the fight. Every time he steps to punch, he's going to be thinking, I might have to deal with the takedown. Every time um, Curtis Blades steps forward to punch. He's going to be wondering whether he's going to level change underneath it or really commit to those power punches. You know, there's a lot of good wrestlers that, because they've got good wrestling, Michael Chandler's a good example, because he's he's so good bouncing in and out, because he's got such a low low stance and a good level change, people don't know whether, he's, whether his cross is coming or whether he's going to, going to tackle their legs. If Curtis Blades can play on that uncertainty, then he can start landing some big punches of his own. And he's a big guy. I mean, you know, he's topping the scales at 265. If he hits you, he, he he's, he's going to hurt you, and and this is this is for me is more of a confidence thing for Curtis Blades when he establishes his confidence in his striking, which I feel like we saw glimpses of in the Rosen strike fight. Then we're going to start to see that power come through, um, and, and a wrestling foundation is is a really good support basis for striking confidence. You know, even even really really good strikers when they cross over into mixed martial arts, their level of striking drops off because of the threat of a takedown. Um, but it, it you know it, it works both ways. If you come in with a, with a really good wrestling background, you can add strikes onto it with the addition of the confidence that you can wrestle as well. Um, something I had, to, I had to work against a little bit in my early career. Now, of course, we're going to see what what Sergey's real takedown offense looks like and how many times he can defend takedowns and if he gets taken down, how many times he can get back to his feet before he starts to get tired. I mean, you know, Curtis Blades is not really going to be working for submissions too much. I don't really think Sergei Pavlovich is going to be, unless he finds himself in a dominant position where Curtis Blades is already hurt. So, and, unless, I mean, I keep saying that, I, I say that, but now I'm seeing a, an arm triangle from Curtis Blades if he's in top position for long enough. Oh, 
I, I, I'll be honest, I overlooked this fight when I, when I first saw it as a main event. I thought to myself, oh, okay, yeah, it should, should be a fun one, should be an interesting one. But the more I've thought about it, the more I've researched it, the more I can see different ways that this, this, this is going to play out. And I feel like Curtis Blades is a really, really good test to see the rest of Sergei Pavlovich's game. Like the, the parts of his game we haven't had the opportunity to see yet because we've not seen him in the second round. We've not seen him under pressure, you know, f- from, from top position consistently over minutes. And how does he deal with that? What's his escaping like? It's a fun fight. I'm excited for this one. Um, I'm excited for this one. I, I feel like we've got a, a title contender in, in this fight for sure. And they're going to be moving one of these guys in that direction. So, uh, it's definitely one that's worth worth keeping an eye on, worth paying attention to, just like the rest of the heavyweight division will be because both of these guys are very problematic for everyone in this division. Anyway, make sure you watch this fight. You will enjoy it. I'm sure of it. It's a good card underneath as well. And make sure you check out Point3Gear.com. Get this uh, this new full reptile Point3Gear collab. It is. They are fantastic. You'll love these shorts. Buy yourself a pair. Take a photo and tag me in it because I like to see people working out in the gear that we've uh, we've created. We love it and we know you will as well. All right, enjoy the fights and I'll see you next time.